Yo, yo, you know what it is. LA Icon right here. Shaka headquarters, Beyond the Label podcast. And today, to my right, your left, we have maybe one of the strongest individuals in the world. Big boy from Strength Cartel. Well, it's cracking. It's cracking, Icon. Are you one of the strongest people in the world? I was the strongest person in the world, strongest powerlifter in the world, 2017. So I can't say that I still am currently. Of course, I could probably go to any gym and be the strongest there but officially on paper because that's what we like to call it when it comes to that competition game is are your numbers on paper Mm -hmm. you know because it doesn't matter if you do it in the gym you got to go and do it in front of three judges unofficial people yeah official official people people and have it on paper you know i mean just like anything you got to have your paperwork so um (laughs) so yeah you know I, i was official 2017 um Strongest, strongest powerlifter in the world. I won this competition called the U.S. Open at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. Amazing. Yeah. Not too far from home. Not too far from home, San Diego. That's like a hometown victory, if you ask me. Yeah. I like it. Who is, and you're not the currently the strongest, technically the strongest no, person No, no, not right now. Because you, know you how, haven't competed or because there's just because I haven't competed. Yeah, yeah, haven't competed. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, if you I don't were do, to go compete. You know, I, I'd really have to put my body through it and. Yeah train specifically for the three lifts the squat uh the bench and the deadlift and um you know that competition was the biggest competition and um for powerlifting and you only won 40 grand so if you can think about that man there's no money in the actual sport it's like in a lot of different uh other other i guess things that you do there may not be a lot of money in it but it gives you the credentials and it helps you build your brand and things like that but i mean in there's that a lot specific of, sport no there's a lot of strong individuals but not everyone has monetized it the way you have you know what i'm saying we'll yeah. get to that let's start off with the the mentality behind getting to that and according to my personal experience with you i know it's called the dead game mentality yeah similar to sure. the mamba mentality yeah yeah no for sure no quit no quit Talk to me about when you first experienced that sort of thinking and um, if you could remember recognizing it, like being in that state of mind, the dead game, the dead game mentality, you know what I'm saying? Um, you talking about when I created my brand or just at a younger age? I mean, at a younger age, when you found yourself yeah. in that, like, I can't give up vibe. Yeah, you know yeah, I'm yeah. I'm going hard, balls of the wall. I was for sure always competitive my whole life, like the whole youth. I just wanted to be competitive, wanted to be the best. But I say, you know, it always I always go back to this. I I believe in high school, kind of when you become that teenager and the competition gets harder when you're younger. If you're the bigger kid, you're most likely going to win. But um, I feel like once you hit high school, most kids are already starting to mature and um that's when the competition gets real. You yeah. know what I mean? Junior high, elementary school, the competition isn't so crazy. But uh, in high school, you you get the, you have access to the gym, you have access to more sports, you have access to a lot more things. And it's your choice from there to take advantage of it or not. And I took advantage of it, man. I used to hit the weight room a lot. And that's how I started working out for, for sports, for football. That's how I got really into working out was um was for football, man. And, and uh, it just became an addiction and something that I, ha- I had to do, man, to become better and better, stronger and stronger. And it's funny that you say that because I recently saw a throwback of you being very young and super low key, kind of buff like you are right yeah, now. Yeah, 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 for sure. Honestly, you you were pretty big fool yeah yeah it was is that when you first high so high school is when you first became athletic or were you athletic pop warner basketball baseball yeah i did sports my whole life so always been athletic always wrestled um i wrestled for a long time so i kind of always remember how much i weighed in high school because i wrestled like 165 171s 181 so i kind of always knew what i weighed in um but yeah i was always strong always pretty athletic, cut up. When I was younger, I was just more stocky. I was real broad, mm-hmm. stocky and broad. And um, as I got older is when the muscle definition was coming out quick, came out super quick. And then I utilized what I had and, and put in even more work, you know, but yeah, I always been 
that guy that was like in school, like the swollest dude or the strongest. Mm-hmm. You always kind of had that. It was just Fire. a God given thing. You know what I mean? I, I, so I is can't. Genetics is are, are your parents or is your father buff or anything like he that? He was cut up, but no smaller dude. So then is it safe to say maybe it's your mom's side that are more bigger? They're small too. I don't know where it came from. I just know like when my mom had me, she said that my shoulders were the hardest thing to come out. <laughs> Not the head, you know? Prayers so, the mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Always just was built broad and um, yeah, God given strength, man, honestly. And right now you said you uh, you played football and you and you wrestled. Which mm-hmm. At which sport did you excel at more? Football because I liked it more, you know? Um, wrestling, I liked, but... Um, I just I just like the game of football much more um, bigger, bigger stage. You could be on more eyes, more pressure, Absolutely. more, um, more respected in a weird, more way. respected. Uh, Although you would figure single combat like wrestling yeah, is a vibe. wrestling is dope. But you get a lot of shine, man, in, in football. You make a big play. You, it's, a, it's a thing. You're yeah, the yeah, hero. Yeah. You're the oh, hero. Yeah, the for school. sure. Yeah. It, what position better. did you play? Left out? <laughs> Left out, left bench, uh, <laughs> water boy, all those. No, really, though. Um, Halfback or some? No, I played some fullback, but no, mostly um, linebacker and D-line. Mostly all defense. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I could imagine so. getting hit by you at this size would be kind of um, yeah, yeah, yeah. intense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was it was nice, man, for sure. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. Let me ask you something. Would you say that uh, Latinos are the minority in uh, in lifting? Oh, for sure. When we got into the game, or when I got into the game, to say the least. Yeah, when I got into the game, like 2014 ish, I would say 2014, um, maybe the end of 2013, but more 2014. There was. There was no Chicanos in the lifting game that I saw, mm-hmm. not once. You know, white guys, black guys, Asian guys, and those were who took over the whole game. And it was kind of, I don't want to say cookie cutter because definitely not a cookie cutter. They put in work to get their physiques and of the look course. that they want. But they had the typical look, clean cut looking guys. Not you know, like us. No, no, definitely not. And especially not the way I looked when I came into the game. I wasn't this lean. I didn't have I the muscle. I was all about... I don't really give a power, strength, and like you said, mentality. Like, I don't give a mentality. I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to go into the gym, be the baddest fool in there, and I wasn't going to take no shit. So I had a different mentality. I'm not saying I don't have that now, but um, it was more of a chip on my shoulder mentality. No, you wanted to prove something. For sure. I all I wanted to You're the man now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I wanted to, to, I had a chip on my shoulder. I, you know, when I first got into the game, I would do three, four, five videos in one day doing my biggest lifts to showcase what I could do, you know, and um, that, that's what I would do. I'd put it all on the line. A lot of people want to think that they can just do the daily vlogs and minimal work to get to that point. I literally busted my ass in those years, which no one sees for like 10 years now. You'll see the viral videos still pop up of on course. YouTube and if you're shit the like algorithm that. For sure. Yeah, but... Um, that's how I got my name out there by doing the craziest shit I could possibly do, but pushing how, my body to the limit. But what's the state of mind for you even thinking that, hey, maybe I should film this to begin with? Was Were people vlogging back then already? No, um, people were just – it was kind of when um, – Instagram was just like popping off and people were putting their lifts on Instagram. And um, I didn't even have an Instagram. Just one of the guys in the gym was like, hey, you, you could make more one. than this dude. Like you should start posting your shit. I was like, nah, I'm cool. I never I was never about um, social media much, you know, and then I started whatever posting posting some lifts it, it got traction i um got hit up by this dude that passed away now rich piana have you heard of that dude we'll get to that right yeah, now. yeah um i got hit up by him and just basically spiraled from there yeah at what point did you realize you were going to be able to monetize this was it prior to rich or after the fact after rich after learning how he monetized it how he um set up his business and things like that that's when i knew i could monetize it but before that i mean i'm sure like any other lifter you just want to get some free product I let me that. hit some lifts and let me get some free protein let me get some free pre-workout whatever it may be you know what i mean so now that we mentioned rich Whatever happened with Rich is documented. We don't need to talk about that. But what I would like to talk about is yeah. like some positive shit that you learned from Rich and oh, for sure. things like that. Talk to me about some positivity and the things you've learned from from Rich Piana. Yeah. You know, um, of course, when you're going through any type of like 
altercation or whatever you want to call it, like any type of thing, you're always going to maybe be emotional and say certain things or do certain do certain things. But once things cool down and you can look at the situation, um, like now, it's not as serious. Yeah, exactly. Like now, it's not as not as serious as, as, it, as it felt as it felt. No. But um, man, I, I can't say enough about him for sure. Like. He, I was the first guy that he sponsored on That's his awesome. clothing brand. His, when he brought out his supplements and clothing, I was the first guy that he sponsored. And then, um, we just started creating all these videos, man. We had so many viral YouTube videos. I mean, these videos were hitting hundreds of thousands, millions of views when I came out there. So I had no clue what this shit was. All I knew there was Instagram and let me post. And I was just showcasing my biggest lifts. And um, yeah, it was, it was crazy, man. Um, I was deadlifting seven, 800 pounds, like multiple days a week, bench pressing five, 600 pounds, dumbbell pressing 200 pound dumbbells. I mean, doing flag pulls that I think I probably weighed like 330 back then, flag pulls, yeah, jumping on were, tires. You were nowhere near as lean as no. you are now. I'm sure you were stronger though. I was stronger, of course, but I was just doing crazy shit because I knew he had a really big, big uh, platform and, um, he would just tell me, man, you're going to go viral. Watch. No one's doing this shit you, you're doing. No one has a look you have. So uh, let's just do it. So, fuck, I had no clue about no clue what was going to happen. And we did this one video like you brought up earlier. The novelty the lift. Yeah. yeah, the novelty lift in the vault. 375 pound dumbbells in Ukaipa. And Fire. Um, the the and it was a roll. It was a row. That yeah. was nasty business. Yeah, I it was, thought it was crazy. Your form was questionable. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm just kidding. It was. It was. It was a hard. Nah, thing. you hit that. That was crazy. Yeah, and um, the dumbbell wasn't even in there. This this uh gym used to be a uh a bank, so that's why I had a yeah, ball in there. Yeah, used to have a used to be a bank. So we rolled that dumbbell in there, and it was crazy. Like he couldn't even lift it with two hands. And you lifted it. Yeah, and I, with I one. Honestly, yeah, with one. And I was like, <laughs> you know, and I was the first person to do this shit. Ever. Ever. Fire. And um Oh, it was Excalibur at that point. Yeah. No, oh, one, yeah, no, one, no one knew about stone. this shit. Nah. Fire. I don't think really many people even knew this dumbbell existed. And it's been there for I don't know how many years that gym years was and, and no one's ever lifted it. It was just a thing, a funny thing in the gym. Yeah, it, it was a straight novelty dumbbell. Rich knew when he took you. Yeah. My boy pulled the sword from the stone. Yeah, and that video. And a king was made. At the time when YouTube at its prime, or when it was just beginning and it was becoming the prime, like, yes. we hit, like, 14 million views on a long frame video. Not a not a stupid ass not real a short, nowadays. No, not no. a short. A real video. Not a real video. We hit like 12, 13, 14 million views. And um, that shit literally changed my status overnight. Like I'd go to any expo, anything, and everybody, oh, big boy, you, you rode the 375 pound dumbbell. You're big boy, you rode the 375 pound dumbbell. So that's basically when my whole like social media thing started you know, going crazy. And then after that, I was like, I got to do some crazy ass lifts. And then that's when I just started like doing crazy shit. No one had ever seen. So I've been a YouTube partner since like 2014 or something like that. At what point did you open up your own YouTube and 2015? Like yeah. Awesome. I opened mine in 2015. Um, Before we move on too much into the future, tell me your most fondest memory of you with Rich. Man, um, the fondest and then the wildest, fondest and the wildest, wildest, but still positive. I haven't, I haven't uh, thought about it. So, um, you know, overall I thought, uh, I guess I'm a, I'm gonna say something that's not negative, but what hurt, hurt me in that relationship was I represented Rich's brand that 5%, like it was my own. Um, so I never thought he would kind of turn his back on me like that. So anyways, I repped it like it was my own. I thought he was like a brother, man. I looked up to him like like a like father-brother brother figure. Yeah, because I never knew this game, man. And I literally, everything he, he taught me, I would soak it in. I was a straight sponge, just soaking everything in because I was new to the game. You know what I mean? And... Um, you know, and not and not to say something negative, but he never paid me once. He never paid me once, never paid for nothing. I did everything on my own dime because I also saw a vision. Once I saw what Rich did, I was like, you know what? 
um, I can, I can do this shit too. You know what I mean? So I never expected anything from him and I never even would have left his brand unless he was the one to, to remove me from it. You know what I mean? So, um, but overall he was a good dude. He never, he never held back his knowledge. He would even tell me big, you could do this, or this is how you do this. He, he would, uh, share his game nonstop, man. And he was a, a real, real smart dude. He was always ahead of the game. He, he knew that, just like I was saying, the powerlifting or bodybuilding, there's not much money in the actual sport. But if you can learn to monetize it, like how we said, you can, you know, make a lot of money and that. And that's what he did. You know, he learned to monetize it, really learned how to build a community and build that niche community that people can attach to. Like his was being honest. His was having tattoos. His was being flashy with cars. I mean, he had a lot of different things in the bodybuilding community that people weren't doing. He was a you star. Know? Yeah, he was a star, man. And, uh, yeah, for one, nice. I believe the genuine dude. Um, but man, yeah, he he was crazy. He he for sure did some crazy ass shit, man. Um, the craziest shit I seen, <laughs> I don't even know, man. He's done. you know, you just can't say the first <laughs> I can't one. Say some of the shit he done. <laughs> Fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I respect it. Yeah, but nah. He overall, man. Um, I wish the relationship didn't end the way it did, but it did, and you know we're here now. I mean, I'm here now at least. <laughs> Just kidding. <Wow. laughs> it wasn't me, guys. It he, wasn't and me. He told me earlier in the podcast to say that. You know, <laughs> I edited it. It's getting cut out. Okay. <laughs> hey, nah. So, okay. So, you took everything you learned, you know what I'm saying? Added uh-huh. your own twist to it. 100%. You guys split. Unfortunately, it is what it is. Yeah. What did you do first? Was it the t shirts? It was, yeah. And what was your first design? Um, Just the a, just a OG strength cartel. Logo that, like this, literally that, literally that, and then um, I dropped this. This was this would kind of put us on the map too. So I dropped those pen shorts. Ah, uh, and uh, every, so those are the OG shorts. They're OG, man. They're, they're by pen for those of you at home that don't know what he means. He doesn't mean a pluma. Yeah, he means penitentiary style wardrobe. Yeah. <laughs> so I created those shorts, man, and what I got a lot of that. I was just like, fuck it. Like I used to rock this shit when I worked out in, in prison. Facts. And um, they were cool in there. So I'm like, why not bring them out here? I've never seen no one do this shit. Facts. So I found these uh, in Pakistan. I found these like smock, smock type shorts mm. or, or pants. They're smocks like for um, for nursing. Yes. But they were in this like kind of, uh, what do you call that? Like that ridge or, you know, like in a 501, that ridge uh, style jeans, that ridge yes, yes, blue yes, where yes, it's yes, like, yes, yes, yes. you know. I don't know. We call them crispy hard jeans or something like that. Yeah, I know yeah. what you mean. The 501 hard ones. Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. But I they guess. had that look to them. They had that look to them. I found them and I asked them, hey, will you cut them out there? Like, yeah, just tell me the inches. So I hit up Pakistan, um, told them I wanted to order like 500 pairs or whatever. And I ordered them and I got it. And uh, I took them to the print, this place in Long Beach. They printed on them. I had a strength cartel abbreviated cartel down, just like the way it looks. Um, I'm from California State. Yeah, CDCR, Mm -hmm. whatever. And uh, yeah, I got a lot of backlash, but. They sold like crazy. He said, I got a lot of backlash. I got a lot of up. backlash. Why are you trying to look like a prisoner? Why? And my whole thing is like, <laughs> I'm not. We would get so much backlash in the beginning. Like, you guys think you're a gang. You guys think you guys are prisoners. You guys are glorifying this. Like, I'm not glorifying none of that. But I'm not going to change the man that I am. I'm not, I'm not going to change the man that I am. If this is my style, this is my stilo right here. It doesn't matter if you're doing something negative or positive. I'm still going to be me. I'm still going to do the negative thing, but still have my own style. It's like you, oh, you dress like that. Are you going to go rob a bank? No, motherfucker. This is my style. If you don't like it, then keep pushing. So that's what we always did. My actions showed I was in a positive uh, place and doing positive things. But maybe when we would come to a show or all show up somewhere, we'd have a negative look to 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 say. Yeah, because of stereotype, we're all tatted. Yeah, who's a hella buff in their slingshots? Exactly. The CDCR. Yeah. (laughs) But we were doing positive shit. But that's what kicked up so much dust for us and uh, made a lot of noise. Yeah. So was there any like premeditation behind the thinking that you knew it would go up? 
For sure, for sure. I would see the way Rich played played it, man, 100%. You're basically going against the grain in the fitness industry. You know what I mean? He's, a, he's the exact opposite, like I was saying. You got all the cookie cutter people, then you had Rich. Tad is swole, mm -hmm. going against the grain. And I already knew I even had my own lane. Uh, I'm in this Chicano lane that there's no straight raza Chicanos even doing fitness. So I just instantly took over that whole lane, you know, and, and was, a, was a man to represent it. And um, that's how it started. And what was the mentality behind continuously dropping shirts like, oh, shit, I could drop a whole clothing line? Well, we went, we went to that first expo. And like I said, uh, we sold like probably like a thousand shirts that day or, or within that. A quick 30 piece. Yeah. So it was it was crazy, man. I was just like, oh, shit, this is some real shit. Um, people are real, really going crazy over this movement, you know, mm -hmm. and um, that, that's when I realized it. And then we jumped into supplements like right after that. Explain to me the mind frame behind the subs, because I uh, I've tried some of them. fire. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? yeah. Good flavors. Yeah. In the beginning, did you already have the mind like, OK, I know I'm going to go with this particular chemist or scientist or um, well, no. how, do you, how do you manage and navigate your world through making subs? Well, my current business partner, um, he owned Nutrition Zone, which mm -hmm. they had multiple stores that were franchised and some privately owned. And they already had their own, it was called White Label, but in-house brands. They yes. would carry other brands, but of have course. their own. Mm -hmm. So they already had access to the chemist and, and to the doctors that would create all these supplements. So he went, he asked me like, hey, big, like we, we went to his gym. I started going to his gym in Orange County. They had like... Um, a gym at their headquarters that was really nice Badass. and we started lifting at their gym and that's when he asked hey big like how many shirts are you selling there and i was like i don't know like a thousand and he's like are you serious he goes you ever think about supplements and i was like i have he goes well let's partner up and do them so i was like say no more boom and then that's how we started so at that point that's when he started giving me a bunch of samples of pre-workouts that i that i wanted to try see which one you like the best exactly i picked the one that i liked and just went from there and what was crazy is a lot of brands, if if you know, let's say what what brand do you know that of supplements that you can think of like growing up or whatever? Like what what brand have you ever? Uh, I don't recall a brand that sell you something. I don't want to say sell you like, but okay, but yeah, let's brand. say uh, C4. Let's say C4, right? You have C4 as a supplement brand. C4 is not cool to wear C4 clothes though. Facts. You don't wear C4 clothes. Absolutely. And then not. vice versa, they'll there will be um, big clothing brands. And they'll try to create a supplement. It never works. It never goes hand in hand. Hmm. A supplement brand is never going to be a cool clothing brand. But no. somehow we did that. You did somehow manage we it. made our supplement brand also a cool clothing brand. I don't know how we did that shit. I guess thankful for the people. Because you're a bad you know dude. I mean? But um, yeah, it, 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 it was dope. Honestly, I think it's because, needless to say, you're clearly good in great shape. And it was your brand. You stood behind it. They could 100%. see the results yeah, in front yeah. of them. And I think it was, you marketed it perfect through yourself. Yeah, no, exactly. Thank God you didn't have Spy do it. I know. What was your first supplement? And what is your favorite supplement? Pre workout dead game, my go to impact product. Right when you take it, you're going to feel it. Facts. You know, so for sure, we got a new one that's out right now, Dead Game Max. It's almost I'm, double of what I'm we not have. sure I'm down to try nah, that. You got to do a half scooper. That one is no joke. That one is ruthless right there. But, um, <laughs> and that's yeah, pump. So. That's not caffeine for those of you at no, home. No, no, The Dead Game has caffeine. We have Time to Bleed. That, oh, that's Time pure to Bleed pump. is my favorite. Yeah, Time to Bleed my that's man. non stem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that that's one is me, crazy that's me. too. That's all me. So what do you like personally, pump or caffeine based? Mm, I use both. I use both. Actually, just, you take both. Yeah, literally. Yeah, I take both. Just the Sick. new one has so much pump in it that you really don't need both. It, yeah. So it, it's crazy for for like the uh, supplement geeks out there. It has a 3000 milligrams of citrulline, which is a pump product. And uh, like that's basically what we have in our actual pump product. So if you combine both, you're getting like 6000. It, it's crazy. So it's a real, real strong. Product. And obviously, I literally see you take your own products. It's not 100%, like you yeah. reach into your bag and you pull out some secret shit when the cameras are off. No, yeah. that's he literally takes all his own product. Yeah, you got to stand makes by it. Do it too. Uh, yeah. Hundred <laughs> uh, percent. Talk to me about how clean your supplements are. Oh, super clean, man. Um, 
we don't like to put a ton of um well most most products they put a bunch of filler inside of it like you'll maybe get a big container and it'll be f filled to the top we don't like to put the filler so sometimes we may have a big container it's not all the way full but it's pure pure but product pure. you know what i mean it's that pure uncut shit you know what i mean we even <laughs> put it on the thing I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i like to put my own lean we got the pure uncut you know I respect it. When did you start the dry scoop? I mean, it's not necessarily dry. Honestly, but. back with the Rich Piana. Ah. I don't know where we got it from, but on that 375 pound dumbbell, we doing it on there with uh. his product. I don't know where the hell we got that shit from. Honestly, um, it's funny because just yesterday, this bodybuilder that I know and I'm cool with, and I know he didn't say it towards me, but he was just ragging on people that dry scoop, saying that dry scooping, they do it because I didn't watch the whole video. It was a long video, but saying because they thought they looked cool. Honestly, I never thought that it looked cool. It's just who wants to drink a whole entire water bottle. You know what I mean? A big ass water bottle of pre-workout, be all full. And then go and work out and then still have to sit. Yeah, because you might as well take that shit, swish it in your mouth, and you're ready to go. And when Especially I Especially if you're taking more product, you're taking creatine, you're taking boost pills, you're taking pump, you're taking aminos. Like you're gonna need a big ass thing of water. Facts. So to me, it's like, how can I make this more effective? How how can I get it into my body faster without being so bloated? I'm gonna take it like that. Take it to the dome. And what do they say? You put pills underneath your tongue. You put it on all this blood shit right here. It's gonna get That's into crazy. your body more. I know you know about them gummers and all that. So you put that shit, boom, it hits you, right? Well, I remember when you made me take my first dry scoop and I felt highly uncomfortable about it. But you and Mike were like, fool, you don't drink it dry. Swish some water. Exactly. And I was like... Mm, all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then a little couple seconds, I started twitching. I was like, hey, go. we should probably start working out real quick, yeah, guys. 100%. That was crazy. Yeah. Well, I need to know uh, what's the recruiting process for Strength Cartel? Recruiting? Oh, man, it's a big, big process, man. Do you want me to show you right now? Because right now you got to gotta bust down. You got to do, you know, 100 burpees right now. I was on a 100 <laughs> burpee run for with you for like a cold two weeks, and then... I got a minor injury and I was just like, yeah. What was it? This? That's a minor injury? <laughs> That's the only injury I see right now. Oh, that was crazy. Or no. Which one was it? Hey, Spy, I'm going to need you to go get something from the car while we pack this <laughs> well. That's crazy. Hey, not, nah, um, no, really, I think I got sick is what it was. I didn't get an injury. I got sick and okay. I just fell off the wagon. So I need to get back easy on. Easy to do. Yeah, that's easy to do. I man. think it's easy to get back on too if you're determined. It's not easy to get back on. For some but, people, if you're a quitter, then probably not. I really don't be quitting shit. It's just I'll find an excuse or two. You know what I'm saying? Quitting. The dead game mentality wobbles for me sometimes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But no, nah, really. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard to get back on. Uh, but really, recruiting, there's no recruit process. I mean, pretty much. Or how does one become a member, rather? Because, yeah, you're not recruiting well, you actively. Know, for me, I feel like. There's kind of like two categories. One is like more like the family, the guys that actually come around that I the actually have, you know, working out with me and the core guys. And a lot of those guys I've actually known for a long time. Um, like, let's say someone like Big Joe and Wicked. I was busted with them. You know, what I mean, Shout I did Big time Joe with and them. Wicked. Yeah. And um, they, they've been holding it down for me for a long time. Um, so some guys like that been busted with some guys I've just known some guys I met in the gym. Um to me, it hasn't always been about I'm going to pick like Joe's a great example. Joe doesn't even have social media. He doesn't even care to have social media, you know, so that's a real one that is not there for clout, is not there for the fame, is not there for anything, but just to support his boy. You know what I mean? And, and of course, work out. And of course, work out. And and I know he enjoys the events and enjoys the the, 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 the perks that come with it, of I course. should say. But ultimately he's there to support me and, and i love that man and so i big joe's been a real one for me for for a long time but um but no the other guys man just guys that we met in the gym savage man savage i met him a long time ago at a dub show at an anaheim dub show where king little g performed mm -hmm. i know and exactly gucci man one. and gucci i man. remember exactly which one yeah. i was there oh really yep yeah so i met savage there and um he's been a real one with me as well but uh but yeah, the core family are kind of people that I've met and that really had done the most to stay around and be a part. 
<clears throat> and then I would just say the other strength cartel members, those are just people that have been supporters. You know, when it comes to there's there's two routes you can go for business. You know, there can be a business route like if you really want to be part of strength cartel on Instagram, on social media, you got to have a built social media. Rich would tell me this all the time. It doesn't matter how big you are, how strong you are, how good you look, whatever it may be. If your social media isn't up, you can't showcase it to the world. And therefore you're not gonna be able to push product or push clothing. I mean, that's just keeping it real pure business wise, right? Nice. I can't really pay you. I can't really do something with you. If your social media isn't up. I mean, if you have a thousand followers, what can you do for me? Yeah. You can't be a brand ambassador. You can't. You don't have a following. So that's what I feel like I tell the people that ask me. I say, number one, you know, go out there, represent, you know, and build your social media, you know, and, and of course, tag us. You want to be seen, right? Like if you want to be seen by Shaka, where you better be wearing Shaka and tagging Shaka. Of course. You know what I mean? That's the way to be seen. You might so get stay, a repost. Yeah. And you <laughs> might get a repost. Same with Strength Cartel. But if you actually want to be part of Strength Cartel, you got to build your social media, man. And ideally show up to the gym when Spy's filming. Yeah. Things like that. But. You got to build your social media, man. You got to be posting. You got to be trying to do some viral shit like we talked about earlier. I was in the gym busting my ass, doing the most craziest shit, putting my body, putting everything on the line for this damn video. You know what I mean? Which some people could say stupid, but it got me to where I'm at. You know what I mean? But yeah, Fortune you got to be doing shit like bold, that. Man. Yeah, 100%. So I don't want to dig too deep on your jail experience, but what year did you get out? 2010. Ah, yeah, 2010. Then I went in. Then I played a uh, two years of football, saddleback football. Fire. Yeah. And then that's when I said I jumped into the social media thing, 2014. That's what I'm getting at. Is when yeah. did it click for you to get on social media and all that and stuff like you said? It, it was basically it after I paroled. After I got off parole, <laughs> I control parole. My boy was free to. <laughs> move around and post some reckless shit again. Yeah, nah. Um, yeah, when I got out, my whole my whole goal was to um was to go play football. Yeah. That's the only thing that I knew that was positive that I could go out and do that would cost me no money and that I would stay focused. And that's, that's what I did. Say you actually loved football? I did. I love football. I love football. But um I didn't love school. And that's I actually had a scholarship at at a at a uh, saddleback out of football to um, San Luis Obispo. It's a D1 double A. Fire. But I didn't go. I didn't want to, I didn't want to, I didn't want to go to school no more. And I just, I thought, and I regret this. this is my, my biggest, there's obviously we'll have regrets, but I will say my biggest regret was not going to that four year and being scared that I couldn't make it to the NFL. So I'd rather have kind of just said, you know what? I'm gonna call it right here. I had a good, uh, you know, Juco, you know, um, Juco performance. I did good. Started there. We won like a little championship and, um, I don't want to go to school. So I'm gonna just call it and try something else. And luckily I came into this very quickly, but I kind of prepared myself, my, I don't want to say my entire life, but a huge part of my life to be in this position, to be strong and be ready to perform on social media, whatever you want to call it. Absolutely. It'd be like somebody, uh, I don't know, skateboarding their whole life and then they do a competition and they're, they're a sick ass skater. They didn't come like that overnight. They've been skating their whole entire life for fun. Speaking of which. Yeah. Talk to me about you and Tony Hawk. <laughs> that was dope. Tony Hawk's a. a that is crazy. Yeah. Oh, he's a good dude, man. He's a real one for sure. Yeah, it was crazy. You still man. talk to Tony? I haven't talked to him lately, but we would talk because I would tell him I'd want to come back, and he'd be like, "You're gonna come back," but I don't think I got it. I don't think I got it in me to go back. Did you see the video of him? Was that when you were dro you dropped in, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. It was amazing. Oh, that was crazy. That, that was you're, no joke. You're a uh, very uh. When brave. I commit, I commit, dog. You're brave. For I'll tell sure. you that. When I commit, when I when I have a vision. I get locked in, man, and I, there's no way. There's no one's going to tell me different. I'm going to do that shit. Um, and I only knew there was two options. I was going to make it or I wasn't, and I was up <laughs> for both, you know? <laughs> and I knew both would go viral. Fire. From the yeah. outside looking in, it looks like that would be easy, but when you get on there, like on a half pipe, and you're looking down, and you got to go down. Oh, no. It's kind of it's kind of crazy, right? <laughs> I'm not even down to go to the skate park and go That's down the half right? pipe. Oh, this is like you go to a skate park or you even go to a bigger ramp. There may be like eight, nine, ten feet, something like that. No, this was like a 30-footer, right? No, no, not 30. 13 and a half. 
So I would say it was about like to there. And you got to figure it's a vert ramp. It's called vert. That's not 13 feet, fool. That's high. And I know that oh, okay. Tony's so like is high as hell. Yeah. So his is called a vert. So those other ones, that's like a quarter pipe. No, it, that's nothing. This is a vert. Vert means vertical. there's like three, four feet, feet of straight, straight, of straight down. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Gravity is crazy. And I, and, I, and I even weighed myself before. I weighed 335. He brought a scale out. He's like, let's see how much you weigh. Or I don't know if I brought it or he did. Because I want to show him how big I was. What like, was the purpose of that? Just to see the just amount of force? The biggest, the biggest dude to ever do that shit. Respectfully. Yeah. And um, it hurt. I have to say it hurt. You but bounced back nothing. well. Yeah, yeah. I didn't break nothing. I didn't tear nothing. Um, I, I was, it was, I was all good, but I felt it. It was like being in a car accident. I had that whiplash. I had that whiplash for about two months. Uh, so it's basically what the doctor told me. Nothing broke, right? It's just your bones moved your flesh in there. So, or whatever, vice versa, your, your flesh, uh, got moved around by your bones. So it's like, imagine you pull your arm out and you pull it in. Nothing got ripped, but your flesh got like just worn, you know? And the muscles stretched. surrounding it. Yeah, just stretched and yeah. So that's what happened. My shit just moved in there. So my whole entire body was just aching like out like oh, whiplash man. like you're in a car accident, man. I'm picturing it right now. I saw I, I saw it a couple of times. It was crazy. I was up for a while. I was but I still lifted. He told me, whatever you can put, the your pain tolerance is what it is. is, what it is. Yeah. So I'm like, for real? He goes, yeah, nothing's broken. Nothing's ripped. I was like, all right. So I literally lifted like that next weekend. Jeez. Yeah, I took like a little week off to kind of recover. Took and and from the day before, so we're getting it tomorrow. Yeah. Monster. Discipline. So yeah. we, uh, we see the new gym. We see the Urus, see the heavy bike and stuff like that. Um, what does I'm not pocket watching. I'm just saying, what does your, <laughs> what does most of your money come from? Is it subs? Is it, is um, it gear? Is it endorsements? Yeah, no. Um, everything uh, most, basically, all my revenue, all my income is all is all in house. Supplements, I would say for sure, are number one. Um, supplements are, and you sell out every drop. Instantly. We do. Yeah, we, we do sell out every drop, but supplements for sure are biggest revenue because it's a 30 day reoccurring income, 30 to 60 days. You get this, you know, supplement, no, there's 30 servings in it. You have to take it. And if you really like it, I mean, you're going to go and buy it again. It's like something that makes you feel good. Something that's going to help you for your workout. If you don't have it, it's like, if you take pre-workout every single day, then you go to the gym, you don't have it. Your workout's that's not, not gonna the same. The same. Yeah, it's it. not the same. Then you go try another one. That's not as good. It's still not the same. So you're going to come back. So if you like, the, if they really love the product, they're going to buy it. If they work out, Let's just say they work out 15 days a month, you know, so every 60 days they're coming back Facts. and we have multiple products. So for sure, our supplements hit the hardest. Like I said, it's a reoccurring income. It's not like a shirt. A shirt's a lot harder. You could love strength cartel, but I already got 10 strength cartel shirts. Like, do I need another one? So that's what makes it hard. And you have to be mm -hmm. creative and come With out with man, new collabs man. and new designs and things like that. But, um, for sure supplements, but, um, Another one that's just been super big has been YouTube, YouTube and Facebook. Those have been too big. YouTube for the longest, Facebook when we started monetizing it. Um, but yeah, those are two huge uh, monetizing platforms. Is your Facebook still monetized? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, man. So Facebook, YouTube are great. And I mean, what better way? businesses spend thousands of dollars to go and market themselves on different platforms like, and overhead and overhead. But I'm just saying like, let's say, um, you want to go market this new shirt that you dropped. All right. I'm gonna go put it on Google. I'm going to go put it on Facebook. I'm going to go put it on YouTube, whatever it may be. And I'm going to go spend money for the ads. Right. Well, my channel, I put everything through my own channel. So YouTube's actually paying me to promote my promo. own product. <laughs> what better platform? Same with Facebook. They're paying me to promote my own platform. Instagram is different, man. There's no monetizing Instagram unless you get a brand deal or you're pushing your own product. Well, they removed the monetization. It's from still the... whack. It was whack. dollar cap out. Yeah, that was true. It was whack. Whack. YouTube is the only platform they give you 40% of your revenue. 
or, or they give you 40% of their ad. So if you want to go spend, let's say you have your own brand, you give YouTube a thousand dollars, they're giving you $400 of that. YouTube gives you 40% of their, um, ad revenue, of their ad revenue. The only platform that does that shit, 40%. So if you don't, if you're a person on social media, if you're an influencer, I don't know why all these people spend all their time making BS Instagram content, but I do know why they can do it themselves. They don't want to pay for a videographer. They don't want to pay for an editor. They don't want to pay for the overhead. I get it. Instagram is easy. That's an easy cop out way. But you're making no money. You're putting all this effort into what? Go viral to make what? No money? To what? Go push another brand that ain't yours? Just for, nah, I'm cool. I'm gonna go and focus all my energy on the platforms that actually make me money. And that's YouTube, that's Facebook. And not only that, YouTube makes that cult following. YouTube is gonna create that cult following. Facts. They're gonna get to know who you are as a man. They're gonna get to know the guys, the people around you. You know, um, YouTube is, is the biggest cult following that you can create man because they're getting so much time youtube what you're gonna get or instagram you're gonna get a short or a reel whatever 30 second reel they don't know who you are you're posting your best shit okay icons you know the shit he's he's the best of the best yeah i seen this shit youtube you go on there eating this sandwich ketchup dripped right here i stumbled my shoe came in time whatever it may be you're gonna show them the raw the uncut shit vlog style shit Mm -hmm. you know day in the life shit Day in the life, the shit that you like to eat, the things you like to wear, the place you like to go, the lingo you use. I mean, they get to pick up on every little thing that you do Actually. and they're going to relate somehow. And one of those times they're going to connect with you on Instagram. They cannot connect with you. It's they can look at you. Oh, man, he's sick. I like his chain. Damn, it's so dope. He has his own podcast. Damn, I love his style. OK, that's as far as it goes. That's very it. materialistic, very um, shallow. That that's fleeting. it. Fleeting. That's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. YouTube, you get to see the real you. You get to see who you are as a man. Your ups and downs. You talk about different situations. You know what I mean. And that's where people get to get to know who you are. You know. Facts. And they pay you. And they pay you. And shout you out get to Google. To, yeah. Shout out to Google. Google Assets, man. Thank you for paying me every twenty first. Do you like clockwork? You know what? You got a <laughs> lot of different income sources, but I'm going to tell you something. And monster. We're going to get to that. All right. When the 21st is on a Sunday or a Saturday, I'm pissed off. True. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> got to wait. But yeah, speaking of which, talk to me about how you came about your sponsorship with monster. Cause that's crazy. Yeah. It was after my, like I said, so 2017 won the U S open powerlifting boom like i said 40k payout which is cool but ain't shit right but what it what it did do is it gave me those credentials that i'm not just a gym lifter i actually go out there and compete and win and that's what monster a big brand like monster they want to see that they like that they like people that are number one they like people that actually compete they like people that go and compete and rock their brand so after that i started i competed it's just like in anything there's a bunch of different leagues in powerlifting so i'd already been USPA, world champion, national champion. I had all this shit already. But when I did the US Open, that was, that was one. all of them in one. That that was where everyone came. Yeah, exactly. So um, so anyways, yeah, after that, um, there's this dude, Hans. He's a director of MMA and now like sports athletics. And uh, he's from San Diego. He's mm-hmm. from Oceanside, you know, so basically right uh, around Camp the Pendleton. Yeah, Camp Pendleton split us and he kind of caught wind. I knew Flex Lewis. He was the first like person in the fitness industry to ever get sponsored by monster. He put out a good word. He liked my look and man, it came about it. Monster's been one of the most, not one of the most loyal sponsorship, great relationship, great relationship with Hans, the director, um, man. And it just put me on another level, man. I was a second in the fitness game, the second dude to ever get sponsored by monster. So it was super big flex. This dude, flex Lewis. Yeah. 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 You know, and he was seven time Mr. Olympia 212. And I was just one time, you know. <laughs> Gotta respect yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But but you know, but yeah. And they man, respected your grind. They respected, yeah, they respected the grind and uh, they recognized your marketing capabilities they did, were yeah. fucking high. Yeah. It, it was <laughs> it was dope. So yeah. So I've been with Monster for six years now. 
Fire. Yeah. So they picked me up right after that in 2018. Because I was at the end of the year. 2017 was like at the end of the year. Like it had to be like December or something like that. I remember the competition. I'm not going to disclose how much you told me it was, but that <laughs> shit is great. Bro. Yeah, yeah. It's dope, dog. I'm very happy for you, to Thank say the very God. least. Yeah, and they, you know, they, they take care of their athletes. They... They're not pushy. They like organic stuff. It's it's dope, man. It's dope as hell. Yeah, I, lo I love being a, a part of the team. So, talk to me about your diet. Yeah, so right now I've been cutting. Um, I did like a three month where I gave up everything. I gave up alcohol. I gave up fast food. Um, yeah, basically those two things. I gave up alcohol and I gave up fast food, and I actually gave up. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, messing around, you know, <laughs> my boy's abstinent. Yeah, I was, I was, yeah, pretty much. He was retaining. Uh, yeah, I was, I was, um, <laughs> yeah. I, so for three months, I just want to focus on myself, become That's a better cute. version of myself. And it was crazy. I only want to lose like 20 pounds. I think I weigh like 310 or three, 300, 310. I can't remember. I was like, man, let me get to like 280. I ended up losing 55 pounds. I got to, uh, 255. And uh, man, I felt good. I didn't like exactly the way I felt because I lost muscle. You know what I mean? And things bit. like that. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I felt it felt real good. My mind got clear. No drinking, no going out. I was going to bed early, waking up at like 536 every day. Like I felt awesome, man. Honestly, I felt I felt so good. And I still do it now, but I've thrown in more food. I've, I've changed it to to be more. Um, how, how would you say it long term like to be more sustainable it's a lifestyle now yeah you want to yes you want to have those detox period you know where you go all in you're, you're basically doing a damn sprint yep you know but it's not sustainable you can't sprint to, no sprinter will tell you, you can't sprint for an hour facts you know what i mean so we you know like anything want to be a little marathon and uh, you want to be able to sustain it. So I've thrown in some other things and changed some certain things, but kept a lot of the same habits and man, I feel good. Are you yeah. calorie counting by any chance? Not really, huh? I was calorie counting when I was cutting. Right now I'm doing more macros, which um, mm. is more towards like the way you want your physique to look. Um. Calorie counting is gonna help you lose overall mass fat and muscle which is really great like especially you just want to lose weight calorie counting is the best you can li like let's say you're burning let's say you're burning um 2000 calories a day you know so if you consume 1500 calories you're going to lose weight it doesn't really matter what cal you could eat 1500 calories in snicker bars and you're going to lose weight because you're eating less and you're burning <laughs> And same, so that's a calorie <laughs> deficit. A calorie surplus is the opposite. You could, if you're burning 2000, you eat 2,500, you're gonna gain weight. And you could eat 2,500 Snickers and you're gonna gain weight, but your physique is not gonna be the way it mm -hmm. looks. So when it comes to physique, you have to know your macros. Now you gotta know your fats, your protein, your carbs. So then you base, so right now that's what I do. I do more macros. Okay, I'm gonna eat this many grams of protein, this many grams of carbs, and this many grams of fat because I want my body to look this way i want to pack on more muscle and you know what i mean and do you have any cheat days yeah right now i do right now i have a cheat day i like i like when i have my kids on sundays to be able to eat what i want i'm not being as strict right now because i'm been lifting so hard i've been trying to put back on that muscle that i had lost so um i've been eating a lot more protein and and good carbs and things like that but um yeah is there like a middle ground in dieting and well, like you said, you found it because technically for your diet, it was a diet initially, but then it turned into like a sustainable lifestyle. Right. How hard was it for you to, for the normal human being, how does a normal person that wants to diet try to find the middle ground? See, it's like anything, man. It's like asking a dr drug addict, what's a middle ground? It's just got to be cold <laughs> turkey. It's the truth, man. I mean, you know, I know. They don't call me big boy for anything. Food is like a drug. It's very addictive. It gives you that instant gratification. And that's what we look for, whether it's drugs or food or sex, whatever it may be. It's instant gratification, Absolutely. buying things. So those type of things, you got to just cut it cold turkey. Honestly, it's like you got to have in your mind, you got to have the discipline in my gonna choose this or that like you know it's got to be that choice every single day it's got to be that right choice every day that's the only way you're gonna get through it there's no middle ground i wish i could say there was a middle ground but there isn't, there isn't. nah there I isn't you it. gotta draw the line in the sand and say i'm not going no more I, I gotta you know yeah are you still just eating freaking hamburger meat and rice 
Yeah, basically, my whole diet right now is just meat and rice. Monster. Chicken or chicken or beef, you know? Or when I want to have a cheat meal, I'll go out and get it. But in my household, all I got is meat, rice, and eggs. Yeah. And if you don't mind me asking, how many grams of protein are you eating a day? Yeah, right now, I would say I eat about... 250 to 300 grams of protein a day. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's and, crazy. And I, I pretty much match it with carbs. So I pretty much eat the same amount of carbs as I do protein. And then... Um, but it I, works for you. Oh, 100%. Yeah. You... I, mean, I don't think me eating the same amount of carbs... No, no, no. If you're not working out, yeah. If you're not working out, you don't want to do that. That's the key. But, yeah. um... But yes, believe it or not, carbs do pack on size because it has a, a glycogen. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And, um, the glycogen again is like the sugar, you know how, yes. like when a diabetic eats sugar, things like that, it blow up, mm. you know? So, um, it's the same thing with our body. So if we add carbs to our bodies, we actually fill out more when we don't have the carbs are more depleted. So, um, so I like to keep carbed up, but I'm burning them. You know what I mean? I work out every day. Well, yeah. Not only that, you, the amount of muscle mass you have, you're burning exactly. at rest. Right? Yeah. Regardless. The more muscle, the more calories you burn as well. Um, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, I probably eat 250 to 300 grams of protein and about the same of carbs. And I eat about 50 grams of good fats a day, like almonds or avocado or whatever. Fire. Yeah. If a person only had two days to work out a week, mm-hmm. what would you suggest them to do? Man, it definitely have to be a full body workout, something with cardio where you sense. can get your, you know, lifting. And I hate to say it, not that I'm even promoting, I don't get nothing off it, but, but burpees, honestly, I would say you get such a good honestly, combination of cardio and some type of weight training exercise where you're going to build some type of muscle. So shoot burpees, man, if you could start off with 20 a day, 50 a day. You know, work your way up to a hundred. I remember when I asked you, like, what was an appropriate time frame to hit a hundred burpees in? You're like, eh, fifteen minutes or so. Twenty minutes for no, oh, you yeah. said for me. Twenty, yeah, twenty-ish, yeah, yeah. Twenty-ish for I me. I twenty, yeah. And in that twenty, I was first. I hit like fifty. Yeah. Then the next week I hit sixty. Then the next week I started to hit seventy-five, and then um. And you got sick. Then I got sick. Sick. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> everyone always can be like that. <laughs> They always, um, everyone, I can't live with you. Or I can't this. And I always told the icon when he came, it's like, we're all at a different level. Look at Savage, yeah, look at Spy, look at me. No one's going to judge. Like, it's like, I hate, I hate it when someone will go into the gym or in any type of other field. Let's say you're skateboarding. Oh, look at that dude. He sucks at skateboarding. Like, why would you do that? He's at coming point, into yeah. your realm, coming into your area. And you want to give that bad look that all, all skaters are just going to be judgmental. Like, no. So it's the same with lifting. Like, I don't care if you lift one one pound if you're in there doing it i'm gonna encourage you i'm gonna invite you i'm gonna i want you to do better you know i want to see the growth but um I'll, I'll never shame somebody for lifting you know or, or trying to better themselves because ultimately you know self-improvement you're, you're lifting Absolutely. yourself improving yourself you know so I'll, I'll never shame somebody for that i i like to see it i like to uh encourage it and um i like to see the growth you know speaking of growth how did you, what made you want to go from how big you were to how lean you are now? Man. Because you have a six pack now. Some people don't believe that. I didn't believe it. <laughs> and then yeah. you showed me and I was like, oh, a little, little four pack, you know, whatever. Um, Yeah. Well, when I was that big, I was doing it for a purpose. It was giving you more power. It was giving me more power. I knew the bigger I was, the stronger I would be. Mm-hmm. You know, if you have, so I squatted, um, 900 pounds, right? I squat 925 in the gym, 900 pounds in competition, 903. You have 900 pounds on the, on your back. If your waist is smaller, you have less weight. It's not going to, it's like a, a, what, a building. If the base is super skinny, it's not going to be able to hold it. You want a thick ass base, you know? So I knew for myself, the bigger I was, the stronger I was going to be. So I wasn't counting calories or anything. I was just eating yeah, as good. much as I could. I would eat in the middle of the night. I eat excessively, honestly, just to be as strong and big as I could to be number one in the world, especially for that competition. I I put my body on the line. Yeah, honestly. there's not um cut up people at these competitions. Everyone's Oh yeah. When you get to that heavyweight category, everyone's they're like 400 pounds, mm-hmm. you know? So I was actually in that one, I was a lighter end. I weighed like 350 something 
um, I think it was like 358. It was like the highest I've been, almost three, 360 pounds. And I remember these dudes were like 410, 420 still, you know, because you, like I said, you're putting 900 plus pounds on your back. It's like, you're, it's hard, man. It'll crush you. So easily. Yeah. And then the same thing, you're bench pressing 600 pounds. I mean, it's a lot of toll on your body, you know, mm -hmm. so you got to be as big as you can. And, um, I achieved that goal. And, um, after that, I still wanted to lift heavy. I toned my eating down, but I still knew if I wanted to do these crazy feats of strength, I still had to be big. So I didn't want to completely lose a ton of weight. And then once I kind of was like, man, what more can I do? I deadlifted straight bar, 900 pounds. I squatted 900 pounds. I bent 600. I did on a trap bar, over a thousand pound trap bar. I did 250 pound dumbbells each hand, pressing it. You seen I did the 375 pound roll. I did a 330 pound row at Gold's Gym. I don't know if you ever saw that. I rode like their big gold dumbbell. I was the first to do that. So first to do the 250 at Ronnie Coleman's gym, flew to Texas to go hit his dumbbells that he never hit. And I went and hit them and shit. Ronnie Coleman, you know who that is? Yes, of course. So I did that. I did um a 685 pounds squat with no hands. Just yeah, the, the no bar. bandit, yep. I did a, a 405 pound one arm deadlift. I bench pressed 225 in each hand on a bar, like 225, 225 in each hand. I did, that was the first to do that. All these I was the first to do. I'm trying to think. I did no handed front squats. I did front squats with like 600 pounds with no hands, just let it rest. I did all this crazy shit back then. But um, once I knew, I don't know where I, what else I could do. So I was like, you know what? Rich told me this, Rich gave me this idea. He said, you always got a car to play. You could cut down and it'll change the game. It'll bring a whole new demographic. So that's what I did. I was like, you know what? I remember him always telling me that. So I'm gonna switch it up. That's Boom. what I did, yeah. My boy started cutting. Yeah. I see that a lot, you know, and, and like you said, it served a purpose. Like, like Cali, like Cali. Yeah. Right? You see him dropping in size, getting a whole lot more leaner. Right. And I, I often see that it's almost, um, I don't, I don't want to say it's trendy, but a lot of cats are saying, you know, kick, kick the protein, the protein powder. You think it's, it, is that because of the fillers that are, that are in the protein? Well, um, I'm not against protein powder or protein drinks. I'm not. If you're on the move and you have nothing else to, to eat. But I mean, logically, you have to think if you have a chicken breast, right? Mm. And you have a powder. <laughs> how is this chicken breast compared to this powder or vice versa? How is this powder? What are you going to eat? You know what I mean? Right. I think you're going to go with the chicken breast. But if you have nothing to eat and drink, then OK, let me drink this powder. But there's no way this, you know, scoop of chocolate protein powder is going to compare to six eggs. It just doesn't. So when people only drink the powders, I think that's where you're being mistaken. And that's where you're doing yourself a disservice. Mm -hmm. But if real food is always going to be the option is a number one option always. Um, but yeah, like I said, you're on the move, you're on the go, you got to smack a protein shake or you need more extra calories than yes. But real food is always going to be the option. The number one option. That's all I know. That's all I eat is real food. If I'm on the go, yes, maybe I'll drink a protein shake, but how important is the quality of real food? Um, like consuming. meaning organic or whatever, free range grass fed beef as a that I don't know. Grab from Walmart. Just because I'm at a stage where I can afford the grass fed shit, I get it. But I don't think there's, I don't think the quality really matters, man. You got a cow, man. That cow is full of protein. Like it doesn't really <laughs> matter. I don't believe that really matters, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Talk to me about your favorite gym routine. Favorite gym routine? Well, my favorite li day of lifting is gonna be chest. I love to hit chest, bench, dumbbells. Every time I go with you, it's shoulders, fool. So, oh, I yeah. You, you, you come on the shoulder day, that's why. And you got that gimp-ass shoulder. <laughs> Blown out shoulder. And I broke it near your town in Laguna. <laughs> Horrible. Oh, shit. Yeah, no chest day, man. I think any guy loves chest day, hates leg day. And that's and they love to clown me. You nah, you've no been legs. hitting legs. You've been hitting legs. I know, but they clown on legs. When are you going to do a leg day like... I always like to say this. Hey, man, you got to do your homework. Go check out my video squatting 925 pounds. There's a ton of leg days, but the leg days get no views. 
No guy, you want to go and watch a guy do leg day, show his ass and legs? No, I'd rather see, a, I mean, you, yeah, you might. Let, but, watch you do a hamstring curl is crazy. Yeah, that's true, that's true. <laughs> but yeah, it gets no views. Everybody wants to see the upper body. What guy, guys want to learn about how to get bigger arms, Absolutely. chest, back, you know? They don't want to see, the haters will talk about legs. And that's what I always say. Like, if you're a straight dude, and it, it, if you're play for the other side, that's fine. You know what I mean? But if you're a straight dude worrying about another straight dude's legs, you got to question what side you play for. <laughs> that's what I say, you know? <laughs> I respect it. Talk to me about uh, going through, what, what What do you call the ailment that you went through where your arms, oh, the um, inside of your arm? No, I'm good now. Yeah, that was Just want to see my bicep, huh? Jeez. That's a little ass. That. That's small. G. <laughs> I photoshopped his arm to look that big. That's just not, that's just like like my ankle or something. Um, I can't even think of what it was called right now. Uh, Rama something. Um, Am I wrong? Ram. Ram. Uh, well, how did that happen? Is what I want to get to. Getting a tattoo. Getting a tattoo. Wow. That's how it happened. Yeah. So, you know, you could say what you want, but. I already had my chest blasted, my stomach blasted, but I wanted to get the rest of my body filled in. You already know, I had my back blasted, my arms blasted. And pretty much, I would say 90% of my work was done upstate. So if you think I can't take pain, I, they say single needle is like torture. No, it's the worst. Yeah, and I got my whole back blasted single yeah, needle. single needle my work chest, all over yeah. us, yeah. So anyways, I was like, man, like I said, I'm in the position that I can afford it. Of course. Why not? It's Let the right me... thing to do to yeah. numb out. Yeah, yeah. I was like, sleep, exactly. Right? So I went to sleep. I knocked out. They tied my arms to the bed. They cut off the circulation. And that's when I got uh, that. Uh, yeah. Uh, they tied my arms to the side. It. Yeah. And I was there for like seven, eight hours. So. It just messed you messed all me up. Messed me up, man. It, it like ripped the fibers in my arms. And it's like with lifting, right? You get that lactic acid that releases. Well, it's like doing that for eight hours. And there was no circulation. It. Nah, and it just tore my shit up. And yeah, I got that um, ram. I don't know why I can't think of what it what it was called. Uh, rhabdo, rhabdomyolysis, Bad rhabdo. It and it's basically yeah, muscle breakdown. Your 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 protein gets into your bloodstream. And um, yeah, I was I was messed up. I was in the hospital for about six days, and then it took me a solid like month and a half to recover from it. But um, I'm back 100%, a little setback. The good thing that it, that it did was I focused on a ton of cardio. All I was doing was cardio. So, and legs. And legs. I was doing a ton of legs then too. And um, so it was, a, it was a blessing when, it, when I would say when it came to doing cardio and getting into better shape. I was already on the roll of doing that. So it didn't really matter. It just kind of, you know, kickstarted it again and... Yeah. But mentally, what kind of toll did that take on you? But mentally, I was I was messed up, man. It uh, like I said, I was about two months in of doing my no drinking, no fast food, and all that, and then I ended up in the hospital for an entire week, and I couldn't work out. So yeah, I took a big toll on my on my head, man. Um, yeah, it 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 was a lot for sure. It was a lot of mental warfare, and. Um, that's that's life though, right? We gotta be mentally strong. We're not always gonna be at the top. Dead game and not always at the yeah, not always at the bottom. But um we gotta we gotta stay strong. Uh I have a question that I should have asked when we were talking about your subs. What um like for the beginners that might not know, mm -hmm. how important are BCAAs? Because every single sub line has branched chain amino acids. What yeah. role does that play? in recovery, in fitness, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so um, simplicity, or as, as simple as I can say, branch chain amino acids are proteins and proteins build up muscle. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need to build muscle. So if you if you have BCAAs, um, that's what protein is and protein <laughs> helps you build muscle. So you wanna be able to take those. The, the reason why I believe most people don't take it is because it's not an impact product. An impact product is like the one I was telling you, the pre-workout or the pump, where you're gonna feel it in 20, 30 minutes and and you're actually going to feel a change in your body. I used to love taking BCAAs because I do not want to feel the lactic acid yeah. forcing through my veins later. But you don't feel it right away. Facts. That's something that you have to take for a long period of time and you'll notice. You'll only kind of notice when you stop taking the BCAAs is when you actually notice. Mm -hmm. But while you take it, you don't really notice as much. So, um, but yeah, I drink them during and after every workout. So needless to say, 
we know at this point in the interview that you've been super athletic your entire life or what have you. Um, yeah. You've been boxing now. I love boxing, man. I you've love been boxing. boxing. Yeah. What's up with Tito? He didn't want the smoke, man. Um, ultimately, <laughs> he didn't get the payday that he wanted. He is got that, a $500,000, which is known. Would you say that's an excuse? I would say it's an excuse. I mean, you could say his age and... I respect that. You know, I'm not here to bag on him. Like, obviously, the shit I talk He's was like... He's one of the greatest gonna, fighters ever. Yeah, exactly. The shit I talk was like, let's stir, stir the pot. Let's get the damn fight cracking. Let's, let's sell go. it. Yeah, let's sell you it. know, we were at TMZ. What, I'm not going to talk shit, you Duh. know? But um, at the end of the day, he wanted that same payout that he got for the silver, which was 500. They wouldn't give him that. So he kind of just said no. I was even willing to give him I most remember of my money. You were telling me you were yeah. willing to give up some to make yeah. it happen. And it just, you know, I just think maybe he didn't want to fight, you know. We used to train at uh, Ruka together, RVCA. Mm. Yeah, we used to train over there and stuff. And I knew sparring partners that I had with some of his sparring partners. So I kind of seen some footage and different <laughs> things. So, you know. All right. I feel it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it didn't happen. Um, am I still open to a fight? Yeah, it just has to make sense, you know. There's a lot of dudes. I, I'm never the one that says no one wants to fight me because, yes, there's a ton of professional heavyweights that would fight me anytime. That's their profession. Duh. It's not my profession. But are there other people in my lane, influencers, lifters, rappers, whatever it wants to be that want to smoke with me? I don't know. So <laughs> am I open to that with someone that has a big platform like me? 100%. But it has. We have to be on that same. You know what I mean? Makes absolutely sense. Same level. I'm not gonna go fight a dude with no following. Makes no sense. Unless yeah. you're gonna give me a big ass bag. No, then yeah, because he's gonna blow up off of that. Exactly. Yeah. So it has to be equal, so man. So it has to. It has to. Be has to make sense. Mutually beneficial. Hundred percent. If I just want to fight, I just go keep sparring in my in my own in my gym. Speaking of fighting in your adult life, when was the last time that you're able to say you were in a street fight? Um, more importantly, when was the last time you lost? I say I only taken like I don't even want to call it an L, but I taken a good shot before where where it dazed me. I got one. Someone got one good shot. And that was a that was the only time because, you know, just growing up and in a ton of fights where I've been hit, I've been hit with like a pot over my head, like a big uh, planter pot that someone threw or it busted my whole head. It didn't do nothing. Yeah. I've been, I've been hit with some crazy shit, crowbars, bats. Yeah. And nothing um, had affected me. Even screw just, yeah. Flower pot. But I got uh, hit one time and I like, I got dazed, but um, honestly, not even trying to brag, but I never took the L. Tell them about the one time me and you fought. Don't lie. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Nah. Um, in a real way, though, talk to me about fame and how it's affected you. Um, Positively, negatively. Have, yeah. Have you seen it in yourself? Like, yo, maybe I need a... I'm not saying anything in particular. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah? What do you got to say? No, nothing at all. I've, I've caught myself being a little <laughs> cocky here or there or maybe being more reserved, backing yeah. away from people and situations. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. hundred percent. I mean, you definitely got to go into every situation with you know, being more cautious, any place you go to going out. I mean, a hundred percent, you got to know your surroundings, who you're there with that a hundred percent. I think about every single day. I don't even like going out to big public gyms that I've never been to by myself. I wouldn't just cause you never know. We've gone to Cerritos freaking golds, brother. Yeah. I know. Just me, you savage and like two other people. But we already know that setting. I, I already I know that surrounding that. and we're going in a group. I wouldn't go just spy and I probably, you know, but um you're not buff enough that's messed up fine but yeah for sure that um let me ask you this more importantly how this is the real question how has fame affected the people or your fame affected the people around you man you know like they say you know it becomes like a period right the circle smaller and smaller 100 percent. so yeah i just think a lot of people, when they're around, they they believe they become entitled. We don't ask for that. Like I didn't even ask for the fame, but the things that come with it, we definitely don't ask for. Like the entitlement from people, the open hands, the um, the backstabbing, whatever. We don't ask for those things, but that's what comes along with the more notoriety, the more fame, the more money, whatever it may be. Those things are just coming along with it. So definitely seeing people. A lot of people come and go. Some people I wish didn't go. Beef starts, whatever, but. Um, mm. I keep pushing. I know who I am and 
I'm going to keep keep doing me. I solidified who I am. Fact. You know, the relationships that suck that I believe broke through the more of the social media fame and this and that is more of like family relationships or girl relationships. I believe those are the biggest things that mean the most to me that took a toll and, and got broken. Other dudes and friendships, those kind of come and go and you find out who the real ones are kind of when it, when it comes to those type of things. But the things that sucks for me is I believe a lot of things, things with, you know, my family, my baby moms and, you know, things like that. Uh, it really affected them. And that's what I, that's what I hate, you know, those type of things, but it just comes with it and people, people want it, but you know, they got, there's a lot of downside. We talk about the mental part. That's a big part, you know, with so much praise also comes a ton of hate. So if you're not strong mentally for the hate, this is not for you right here. Absolutely. Because it can be 50, 50 at times. It can be 50% hate, 50% positivity. And no matter what, you're always going to look at the hate more than the positive. You can be 90% positive, 10% hate, and you'll still pay attention to that 10 more. Absolutely. So that's what stands out. Yeah. So you got to be mentally strong in this game. Do you think you'll find real love at this point? I'm not even joking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, have you even considered so. just going back to your BM? Like, yo, baby, you loved me when I wasn't it. You know what I'm saying? What's yeah, good? yeah, yeah. No, that I think that train, what do they say, is taking off already for her, you know? Uh, what about for yourself, though, as far as real love? Do you think you'll be able to find I, real I'd love? I'd like to find it, honestly. Yeah, of course, man. I'm sure you find it frequently. <laughs> There's a, I, I always say this. There's a lot of girls that love me. <laughs> but I, I want to, you know, no, I, I think so. hundred percent. I, I, I think I will. I want to find it. I'm open to it. I think my whole life and, you know, and it doesn't matter. Cause like I said, uh, past relationships is done, but I don't think, I don't know if you've, okay. So I'm not going to say you, I'm going to say other men. It's hard to say that my whole entire life, I wanted to be settled down and have a family. I don't think I've ever really felt that in my lifetime until recently until recently i'm like all right that's what i want but i think my whole life i don't think i've really felt that like where i'm like man you know what i i want to be tied down i want to be in a relationship i want to you know just have this one person forever or whatever i don't think i've ever really felt that my entire life you know but i'm at that position now 100 percent fire but uh but yeah that's a tough one man Relationships are hard. That's the one thing I definitely still learning to this day. Mastering. Oh, I respect it. At what point in your life did you feel like, damn, I made it? Still don't feel it yet, man. Is still it a hungry. is it a monetary thing or is it like what is it? Because you got the Lambo, you got your own gym, you yeah. got all the pretty girls on IG. Like, wh at what point is it like, damn, I made it? I just think it's that same mentality where it's just um. You want to continue to like level up. I respect you it. You know, just want to continue to level up. Yeah, for change. sure. You 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 can be complacent. You can get comfortable, but that's never been who I I was as a man. You know what I mean? Like I said, it could be a, a negative thing with relationships. You know, which that's a whole different category. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I just feel like that. Like I always got more to give. I always have more ambition. Um. I know there's more I can do. Uh, I, I just, yeah, I don't feel satisfied at all yet. So with that being said, then what is a dream of yours that you haven't obtained yet? And what are you doing to reach it? Man, we got a lot of things in the work. Like, you know, my taco shop. Fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you haven't been there, huh? You haven't invited me, uh, dog. You got to come through. Well, we're, we're basically about, I would just say this, about 99% um, in already. We're going to open up our first real brick and mortar we we have a pop-up that we're open twice a, uh twice a week Shop right tacos now Alpina. tacos la pina baby we our first real location is going to open up in the john wayne airport fire yeah oh you're gonna make a killing yeah so it's gonna be crazy hey, can i buy in real quick like just one percent or something <laughs> maybe we might have yeah we might we might be able I to work that out piece on me right all now. right all right we might be able to do that yeah so we're basically in Man, um, and once we launch there, it just opens up nationwide to all the airports. I just want to tell you right now, congratulations in advance, because, dude, at the airport, who's not going to want some fire-ass tacos yeah. at the airport? I know. Ah, I'm so happy yeah, for you. Thanks, that dog. is crazy. Yeah, so we've been working on that deal for a minute, and uh, what's crazy, it's a 50-year, or 50, 15-year deal 
with them. So locked in. Yeah, we're locked in, baby. Yeah, so it's gonna oh, be. You're gonna kill it. Yeah, it's gonna be crazy, <laughs> dog. I'm I'm super excited with that. That's amazing um, for you. You know, um, Bad obviously we want to continue to grow. You know, me at me as a brand, Strength Cartel, and everything. But we always got to look for that exit play. You know, and I hope that's a big exit play. We got our hot sauce, Amante. We got a whole line drop in. We got some big people that want to invest that are in that game as well. So we've got a lot of a lot of things in the works that are outside of what you see from me on social media. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that's what it takes. And, you know, my business partner would always say, like, you got to have your day to day. Like, this is day to day. This is a day to day grind. But you also have have to have the other things that are going to be that long term play, those exits. Absolutely. Moves. But day to day, I'm grinding every day. Every day. I feel it. We ain't sleeping in over here. We ain't we ain't got nothing to celebrate yet. You're doing very well for yourself. And I'm, I'm glad to be able to see it. Hell yeah, likewise. You talk about Appreciate it. you guys. I mean, I want to tell you that you have made it. You're sitting next to me here at Shaka. That's true. Once I knew, I guess you're right. Once I sat here next to Icon, pink bear in the middle, I knew I made it. Facts. Facts. And since we are here at Shaka, do you want to talk a little bit about the collaboration you guys Ooh, did? Yeah, I'm excited. Which is very, very unique. Shaka's not just collabing with any old fools, you know what I'm saying? Nah. Yeah, we got the big strength cartel, Shaka Wear collab coming coming up real soon i don't know if we can say where we're dropping i don't know if we can say that yet victoria can we say that is she present can we say that we're dropping uh the oh you did Woo! still five old stores 50 stores dropping in zoomies shock aware strength cartel collab wow. coming soon yeah, yep. so excited about that. That's that's super big for us. That's very very awesome. Congratulations. We've bro. um, I've never been in a retail store for for apparel, so it's uh, I'm excited. We've been for supplements, a ton of brick and mortars, but that's a whole different game. This is yeah. huge to be in a mainstream store with Shockaware. I mean, I'm excited, man. I'm, You're in the mall. Yeah, it's, it's, over. it's crazy. Yeah, it's commercial. Yeah, yeah, it's commercial. It's officially commercial. Yeah, you've been gentrified. So. <laughs> you know, it's a good yeah. feeling. I'm, like, yeah, I'm excited, man. You know, I've, been th I've been thinking this whole time. You know, it's been cooking in my brain when you said the no supplement company has had a successful yeah tea, right? No. And I'm thinking like, how is this so right? Like, what could be like the edge that you had over them? And the only thing that I could possibly think that you did is that you had the t-shirts first and the no, uh -uh. Did you because have, have you ever first? heard of um. Have you ever heard of this brand Live Fit? Yes, they're like the biggest one. Yeah. So they try to create a supplement brand. Their clothing first. Flopped. 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 It's because they didn't have a, a brand ambassador is what I think. That, you know True. what? True. And yeah. you're your own brand ambassador. He wasn't, yeah, he's he wasn't the, the face. Yeah. He was the owner of Live He's not only a yeah. client, he's a player president. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? True. Huh. Oh, that could have been it then. You are the right. you are the, the catalyst. Face. You're the catalyst. Yeah. The yeah. face of your own brand. Right. Right and proven. Yeah. It's well, I guess the only other brand, I guess, before me was 5%. He was both. Rest in peace. Yeah. RIP. So. There you go. 100%. Is there anything you want to leave the people before we clock out, brother? Nah. I think I gave it to him. I Paul. I just I just saw the email right now. Saw it's the a, email. It's official, baby. It's official. Like, the, like a it's official, baby. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Sigh of relief, huh? Yeah. 50 it's stores, there. baby. Well, congratulations. Bars. Again, I'm Hell glad yeah. to be Appreciate able to it. say that I could call on you for whatever. I'm glad you came here today and participated in this interview. Um, shit. You're the buffest fool I know. Shit. <laughs> You're the downest fool I know. To some. To some. <laughs> can, we get, can we get, are we going to, can we get you to bench press icon? How much you weigh? Not a lot. 280. Lion ass. 285 then? Lion ass. That's not, that's not cap. That's for No? Real. Yeah. I've Do you weigh as much as me? I weigh probably like 275, 280. You're a buff ass fool. That's a different, that's a different 280. Yeah. yeah, that's a way that's different. A, that's a way different 280. Yeah. yeah, I can bench you, but we ain't going to do it. Oh. <laughs> Deadly. I only bench girls, homie. I, I pick up girls. You pick up dudes? 
I'll pick you up. Nah. Let's see. A little too far. <laughs> that gesture was good enough for me. Girl, so nah, yeah. But again, we highly appreciate you coming. Yeah, appreciate you. This has been Beyond the Label Podcast. Again, Big Boy Strength Cartel. Make sure you follow him and make sure you like, share, and subscribe to Shock Aware. We highly appreciate y'all. Have a blessed one. Appreciate you guys.